know it's hey it's it's almost the gospel because it's it's an email right it's got to be true and so i got this email from from somewhere i think it was bangladesh or pakistan or something like that and it said you we we are here in pakistan and we have found out that you are a lost relative of somebody such and such and and i'm so excited about this i'm so happy to share this with you and it says that if i give them my bank account number and send them $95 uh, that there's $100,000 waiting for me. <laughs> no, wait, wait, it's true, it's, it's true. It, it was in an email, come on guys. It was in an email, and I'm, I'm thinking, wow, I'm going to paint that. I'm going to get that parking lot done. We're going to get some new tile in the, in the, in the uh, fellowship hall. And, man, I'll tell you what, the Lord, oh, thank you, Lord, $100,000 to me, for me. And, you know, it's got to be true, right? Because I got it in an email. Well, I guess we'll have to see how that goes. And by the way, don't come trying to charge me or looking up, uh, you know, trying to borrow money from me, okay? I, I'm sorry, but I, I know you now, but I won't know you in a little bit, okay? But, you know, can I tell you something about, you know, these, these, these get-rich-quick schemes and these other ideas that we come up with and, and sometimes just conjure up in our own, our own head? It's all a bunch of silliness. It really is. The Bible says that if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. And that we're to recognize that uh, it's staying faithful and staying true that the Lord blesses. You know, one of the greatest hoaxes in life is that if we had more, we would do more. We would give more. You know, the truth is, if we won't trust him now, we won't trust him then. And that's the truth. I heard someone say, hey, I'm going to win the lottery, Pastor. And when I win the lottery, I'm going to give you half of everything I win. And the pastor said, well, that's great. But, you know, you're not giving me half of everything you have now. <laughs> Can I just tell you something? It's all the Lord's. It's all the Lord's. This morning, I want, I want us to learn about the basic concept of Christian stewardship. Christian stewardship. Many, many don't understand what stewardship is. I can remember years ago in California, I preached the message. It was California, so you got to understand this. I was born and raised in California, so I can say that. <clears throat> right, Brother Tom? Brother Tommy and all you other people? I can remember I preached the message on stewardship. And a lady walked up to me after the service and said, Preacher, that was a good message. Really appreciated that. I love that. What is, by the way, stewardship? <laughs> a steward is one who manages the affairs of others. The Christian steward is one who acknowledges that God is the owner and that we are the managers. Amen? Amen. God is the owner and we are the managers. A faithful Christian steward trusts God with his or her whole heart. You see, stewardship is a heart attitude. Stewardship is all about the heart, the heart of God, understanding and knowing the heart of God, seeking the heart of God. And yes, for you and I, from our heart, from our heart, as we grow in our walk and relationship with the Lord, we, we consider it a privilege, a joy, an opportunity to be, to be a good steward. May I tell you that for the last, uh, well, the last six years, nearly seven years, I've been the pastor of this church. And uh, in January, we would have our missions conference. And uh, we love missions conference. We really do. As a matter of fact, normally this time of year in January, we would already have flags up all around. And we would be in missions conference. And I am super excited about missions conference this year. But we've actually moved it from January to April. And uh, we just felt like that that would be a better fit for us. And it actually does work because there's so much that you're trying to finish up with in, in November. Some of you October because I know you celebrate Halloween. But anyway, November and December and all of this. And so it just, it's just it's going to be a better fit for us. And so I just want to tell you that uh, we are a missions-minded church, and we're thankful for, for those who understand the importance of missions giving. And I want to encourage you, even this morning, 
to, to ask the Lord to help you to continue to serve in this ministry. And I, I say serve in this ministry because there are those that are sent across the way, and then there are the senders. While we're reaching and teaching and preaching here in our own Jerusalem, we want to be able to send our missionaries across the way to preach the gospel. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so consider also this may be a little mini missions conference just reminding us uh, to continue to understand and appreciate the importance of missions giving. But you know, I don't want you to lose sight of this. I don't want you to miss this this morning. I want you to know this is really all about the heart of God, all about understanding him in a greater way, all about his provision. A faithful Christian steward trusts God with his whole heart. Are you trusting God this morning with your whole heart? You see, your whole heart includes, yeah, even that, uh, that wallet in your back pocket, that purse, the, your pocketbook. Do we even use that word pocketbook anymore? Uh, anyway, I, I always look over at young people when I ask those questions. And can I tell you something? No matter how, when, what, where, or why, God wants to get it done. He wants to use you to do it. That's the truth. And that's, that's something that we need to understand this morning. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about proving his person. When I talk about proving the Lord, we need to prove his person. Notice verse 5 again. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. How many, how many are thankful for verse 5 and 6? How many know these two verses? You've given these verses up to memory. I know many of you have. But you know, often we don't read uh, beyond verse 5 and 6. But let's begin with verse 5 again. Trust. There's a good word. What do you think? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding, Daryl Miller. Oh, I'm sorry. I just added that. That is a good verse, isn't it? Lean not unto thine own understanding. You see, first, we need to trust him. Trust him. Him personally. Trust him personally. You see, in Sunday school, we've started to... Uh, take a good hard look at the, the letter to the Hebrews and we see that Jesus Christ is our all in all. He finishes it all. He is the one that, that we place our trust in. The first step toward proving God and, and understand when I say proving God, God says, I, I, I say, come on, prove me. Proving God is trusting him as Savior. I'm here to say that if you're here this morning and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the most important decision that you'll ever, ever, ever make is to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, to place your trust in him. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You know, there are a lot of people who have got the cart before the horse. They're missing the most important message and they're talking about they're talking about everything else in the world, but trusting Christ. You see, trust him personally. That's what we need to do. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 says, These things have I written unto you, that believe in the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. I'm here to tell you, the most important act of trust that will ever take place in anyone's life is personally trusting Christ as Savior. Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Are you thankful this morning that your Jesus will never leave thee nor forsake thee? That's my Savior. That's your Savior. He will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I got to tell you, that's trust. That's full trust. Can I tell you, I'm thankful for brothers and sisters in the Lord. How many are thankful for brothers and sisters in the Lord? I'm thankful for family. I'm thankful for fellowship. That's why we got a big hall and we call it the fellowship hall. And the, and the kids growing up think that the word fellowship means food, and it does. Amen? But I'll tell you, we'll all come up short sometime in some way. You and I know that even today we might disappoint someone. He'll never disappoint you. He will never come up short. We need to not only trust in him personally, but we need to trust in him entirely. 
If you walked away with anything this morning, I hope you get a hold of this. Trust him entirely. Trust him entirely. God can do anything but lie. Are you thankful for that this morning? God can do anything but lie. That's why you got to know the word of God because he'll never tell you anything that's contrary to his word. And that's important for us to know. You see, the Bible says, lean not on thine own understanding. Lean not on thine own understanding. Can I tell you where the problem lies in most Christians' lives? We're leaning on our own understanding. You say, no, 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 no. I, I learned this verse a long, long time ago. I, I quote it often, and then I walk right out the door, and I start trying to use my own reasoning and my own thinking, and I start manipulating and figuring things out. You know, I get excited when I get an email that says that I've got $100,000, and, and I've got it all figured. No, 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 no. Trust the Lord. Lean not on thine own understanding. Proverbs 28, 26 he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. <laughs> wow. See, you can say the word fool when you're reading it from the word of God. Amen. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Isn't that good? I love that. I kind of tell you, you know, I'm thankful that, that, you know, even with one who was born with a very, very limited amount of wisdom, the, the, the Bible says, he who winneth souls is wise. Amen? Amen. We, can, we can be wise in the Lord. The more we focus on him, the more we trust him, the wiser we can be. We're to not trust in ourselves. We're to trust in him with ourselves. We're to trust in him with ourselves. Turn with me to Romans. Romans, by the way, who was, who was the book of Romans written to? Oh, I love the Bible students in this, in this room here. Romans, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. You know, many, many years ago, I started writing, I started putting a lot of my notes, uh, a lot of my scripture down in the note. Uh, and so you don't always hear the pages of the Bible turning, but every once in a while it's good to Prove that it's actually from the Bible. Amen? Amen? So when you hear the fluttering of those pages, you know he's actually reading the Bible. Romans, Romans chapter 12, notice verse 1. Very, very familiar scripture, I know, but let's stop and plant ourselves here for a moment. Visit this verse. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable unto God, which is, I love the King James Bible, which is your reasonable service. Amen? Your reasonable service. This is the very least that we should expect from uh, a Christian, that our reasonable service would be that we present our bodies a holy and acceptable sacrifice. Amen? <laughs> this is not unto me, not unto the church, not unto anyone else, not unto your family, but unto the Lord. Can I tell you something? Trust him. Trust him with yourself. Give yourself wholly over to him and fully trust him. And yes, trust him during the tough times. Trust him during the good times. Trust him when you think you know the end game. Trust him when you don't know anything. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Amen. You see, I can remember a time when we had to put these words to work. I can remember years ago when we found ourselves, the Miller family, many, many years ago, uh, in a situation where we had no place to live. And uh, I'm very careful about sharing these kinds of stories. I, I want to stay plugged in and be able to preach the rest of the message. But, you know, my family and my life isn't much different than yours. A lot of people think that pastors were born on a certain side of the planet and everything has just been, as Brother David Wood would say, great and wonderful. They're great and wonderful in that we're always trusting God, but circumstantially, I can remember we found ourselves, the Miller family. Uh, Karen was uh, probably, uh, well, I know one thing for sure, she, she, he, uh, she was four years older than Justin, no matter what it was, okay? 